Hey coaches, welcome back to Football Talk with Coach Chip. We're continuing with our troubleshooting series as we go through the season based on the correspondence I get from listeners to the podcast and viewers of the YouTube channel, issues they're getting. And I got a couple of these late last week after I'd already, not late like Wednesday, after I'd already done the troubleshooting for week two. And then over the weekend, I got a couple of three more about coach were having trouble scoring in the red zone. And that's a very nuanced discussion, and we'll get into it in just a moment. But first, don't forget the podcast. Just dropped another one today. I was a little bit behind. Didn't get it up on Sunday morning like I've been doing the previous 16 episodes. But episode 17 is kind of emptying the mailbag, answering questions that I've gotten over the last four years. and. I've answered them individually through email, and but I just decided to go ahead and put those out there because I had a couple of guys that, that couldn't schedule, and so I said, well, I don't want to skip a week, and so I just did one of me answering viewer and listener questions. So check that out. Go over there. Subscribe to the podcast. It's on Apple and Spotify, and give it a good review and follow it, and it helps out right there, too. And if you have an idea for a video or a podcast guest, contact me right here at Siegel.chip at gmail.com. All right, we got the Jet Manual is still there. I might ask you to put in Jet and three or four games into the season. But if you're already running Jet and you're having issues with it, this may be the answer. All you got to do is call us, hit me up at Siegel.chip at gmail.com. I'll send it to you. You look it over it. If you like it, you pay me for it. If you don't like it, say that's not going to help us. And that's fine. No harm, no foul. No muss, no fuss. Just delete it from your computer and pretend you never did it and keep listening and watching Football Talk with Coach Chip and maybe eventually I'll have something that can help you. Also, if you're a gap scheme team, here you are three, four games in the season, you're having issues. Offensive line manual is there, same scenario. So let me check that out, Coach, and I'll send it to you. And if you like it, you pay for it. Then we got all the freebies. Don't forget that. They're still there, and all you got to do is be a subscriber to get them. Here's two, three, really, that I've been featuring a lot this summer and and on through the season. We've got the call sheet and the script is front and back. The scouting, uh, how you scout and prepare for your next opponent. It's an entire system. I'll send that to you. All you got to do is ask for it. And then, of course, are you getting out of practice what you want to get out of practice? Is it organized? Are you getting everything in you want to get done? If not, hit me up. I'll send this to you. It is the sample practice schedule. It is a micro, uh, a, uh, Excel, an Excel program where you can just plug your stuff into, just download it to your computer. And so, and if you have any questions, hit me up. I will take a deep dive into the concepts. We'll help you with troubleshooting your issues. I'm doing in person Zoom clinics. Uh, consultations. I'll help you if you're trying to get something installed. And I know that most people aren't installing, installing. They're just adding to what they're doing. If you're having issues, hit me up and I'll do my best to help you. I promise. All right, let's talk about red zone offense. Now I'm going to show you three plays that we've done in the past that have been very successful. I say the past, like the last 10, 12 years. They've been very successful to us. And uh, I love motion in the red zone, especially the low red zone. Of course, I love motion all the time because I love the jet. This has been very, this was very good to us. This cat is going to be open. The H right here coming across the middle. You can protect him long enough. Get him right here. And over here, he's not really running a dig or a drag, the X over here. He's running what a slant. And, of course, if it's not there, he'll continue on, and then you get a high-low cross out of it. But what the quarterback's going to do is check, because if it's red zone, especially low red zone, down close to the goal line, they may be in man. So when he goes into that jet motion, 
that backer runs with him, if you feel like you can win right here, tell that quarterback to to peek at that. And if he wins that, that three-step slant right there, hit it. This guy, the one that can undercut the slant, is not going to do it. He's going to react to the jet motion. If anything, he'll take a step right here. And you'll have a throwing window if your wide receiver can win that one-on-one -on -one with the corner because no one's going to be in that hole right there. The hole player is gone. He's chasing that guy. But let's say they play an inside leverage and they take him away. He's coming. And at the very best, this guy's going to be chasing him. Now, you're putting this guy in a bind, and you know how much I love to put folks in a bind. He's got to play the jet action because here it comes, and you're a jet team. That you, they know you run jet. Here he comes. Where it is on the field is irrelevant to this cat. I promise you. Some of y'all have seen some of the video of us doing this stuff. They're going to play the jet. They can't stand it. They can't help it. They've got to. So you're putting him in a bind. And if he pauses at all to check the jet, your H right here should be coming across and come be like Andy Dufresne. Come out of a river of poo poo, a free man on the other side, right there. I, it, I promise you, it, it, if you get him there and you protect long enough, his butt's going to be open. So, how, what does he do about all that right there? Now, the track he's on is negotiable because he needs to avoid. Tell him, don't even be looking for the football till he comes out right over here. Because he needs to watch these cats. Because what are they going to do? This backer is going to come here. Avoid him. This backer is probably going to come here looking for counter or power right through here. Avoid them. These linemen are gone. So I don't, I don't give a hard and fast rule. You run through the, the heels of the defensive line, especially when you're in the red zone. There may be a lot of crap in there. So you want this guy to be, you know, tiptoeing through the tulips right here, making sure – that he gets across the middle of the field unscathed as quick as he can. That's why he doesn't need to focus on the quarterback or the ball until he gets over here and clears that box. He will be open. And if you feel like you can win, I didn't move him in like I should have the corner. He'll be here. If you feel like you can win on this short fade, remember, if you're going to run fade on the goal line or in the red zone, you've got to adjust it. You got to adjust it. Now, you know, some people they do a pretty good job, and you know they come off and and push, 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 and then go right there. I've always liked doing it kind of like a, a corner down on the goal line. And this goes back to the '80s, first time we ever used it. I still remember where I was coaching. Had a big old tight end. He was pretty athletic for a tight end. He's about you know 210 pounds, which is a good small school tight end. And we would flex him. And he would take steps in and then come back out. And he was, he was a basketball player. He was so good with his body, a body and up on corners. He could pretty much do an offensive PI without using his hands, using his hips, using his torso to body up on those guys. And he won a lot of those battles. And that's a, that's a call thing to me. To me, this plays progression. You're going to fake the jet, step back. You want to step back this way to entice the defense. And you're reading that slant, though, as soon as he goes in motion, you're seeing, do I have the slant? Just like you would on a regular jet. If it's there, you take it. If it's not, do you fake? One, two, three. Boom. He'll be open. Here. All right, that's one we've had a lot of success with. All right, here's another one. Similar. These guys right here are all running the same routes, but there's no jet motion on this one. You can fake it to the bubble or you can fake it away from the bubble. If you feel like if you fake it too, I wouldn't do trips. I thought about doing that because you bring, if they're in man, you're bringing one more guy to the party and there's going to be somebody over your H if you put him here. But you can put the tail back over here and have him cross face this way to see if this guy will react to that because you're putting him in a bind. He's playing man or at the very least some type of matchup zone. I've got a couple of defensive friends. They hate man because they know you're going to rub them and pick them. And so they match it up. You know, they wait and see the reaction, and they got rules and all that. Either way, though, it's got to be aggressive. They can't just wait, wait, wait. They've got to jump these guys quick. But you do a flash fake here, 
making this guy pause his feet. If those feet die because he's thinking, oh, is he getting the ball there? Or you put him here and run him right at him like you're running sweep to him. That's going to freeze him. So you may get, and so it's same progression. You got one looking at the slant. Now two, the bubble. And we used to score because this guy, for some reason, would he, we would drop step and come. When he did that drop step, he, he'd come here. Once he came here, he was done dealing. He'd step up. I can show you video of that. He'll step up, and he's going to win that battle. But the slant takes the corner out. If he wins it, you can throw it to him. If this guy's really locked in and he takes off like this, it leaves that slant window open. Oh, and look what you got. Here comes that drag again from the H coming from the backside. So if the corner runs and takes away the slant, the backer runs right here and takes away the bubble. He's got a guy on his hips chasing him. You'll get open right there. That this is I love the crossing routes in the red zone, especially the low red zone. I'll talk to you about high red zone later. All right, the third one we've had success with, this has been a major success when we had a good running quarterback. We love to run this, and you've probably seen it on the channel. Go to a YouTube, go to one of the videos that says plays off the jet, and it's on there. I love this play. And what we do is like a superpower. And we fake the jet, and I would do it on the two-yard line. Cause they're going to react to the jet. This is going to be an easy block because he knows that motion's coming. This guy, we're not even going to block. He's going to run to the jet. And we're going to run this right here. Just it don't matter what you do. I just did this to left it that way because it didn't matter what he does over here because you're banging that thing in the A or the B based on where they are. If, uh, if they're in the A gap right here, you're going to block down. You'll turn out on the D end and you have three guys folding, wrapping, and leading through that B gap. If the guy's in a three tech, then it'll be two guys in the A and the H is getting through best he can looking for somebody to block. We'd run this thing like inside the two yard line and quarterback go in untouched or dancing over bodies on the, on the ground. But this is a great play. Again, motion is nasty down in the low red zone. Very nasty. Oh, and you still got your pre-snap slant back over here. If this guy runs with him and you feel like you can win, quarterback can flash fake the, the jet and throw it. Now, when you, if you run it inside the two, I'd say take that off the table. Say, hey, dude, you're keeping it. You're getting behind these guys. And you got to have a quarterback that can run it. It's not afraid to stick it up in there. And so with some of this stuff, red zone stuff is like anything else. It's got to be suited to your personnel. All right, now I got some formations and ideas for you, things you can do, things that I shared with the coaches. I love bunch sets. If time wasn't an issue, as far as the play clock goes, shift into it. Get in your regular offense, have your Y out here, like, like if it was me, have your Z over here, and then shift into it. Because once they get lined up, talking about the defense, remember, they're they're picking guys. They said, I got him, I got him, I got him. Now you move, yeah, that's why I love practicing fast because you get the play in now in a hurry. Even though you're not in a hurry, you get the play in right away. So now your kids can line up and you can shift into it. Or you can line up over here, all of them over here, and shift them all over here. Make the defense think and move. They've already got an advantage because you're playing on a constricted field. You, you, they're not worried about the deep ball. And so they're going to be snug to the line. So what do you do to get that advantage back from them? Make them move and think after they already set up. Let them get set. Say, okay, I got him. I got him. All right, watch for this. Watch for that. And then shift. And now they got to reset all that. And as soon as you get set for a count, snap the football, run the play. That way they're, pro they're still processing. And you're down here so close to the end zone. Just a little bit of time, a split second, can mean all the difference in the world. And you got all your rub routes you can do. If you like the buck, you got the buck down here. I'm not talking about buck on the one yard line. I'm talking about, you know, in the, the five or the 10. You got your wide zone. If you're a wide zone guy, you've got all kind of gap scheme. You can still run your gut, you know, what I call gut, the, 
the a back uh, a gap power the one back power you wrap that guy right in here there's all kind of things you can do it's not just the, the bunch set some people peg it there's all kind of cool things you can do you can rpo it you can pre-snap access it if you feel like like if this corner plays way in here tight like just outside the z and you feel like you can get the y out there to him you can bubble this z right here and let that h and come right here because the backer ain't gonna make the play okay but you get out of here if you could can reach that corner and then release him here and let him bubble here he'll skate into the end zone there's a whole, there's a whole plethora of things you can do you can run reverses back this way if you've got numbers like if they tilt the field and bring the backer over here don't have it lit, uh, drawn up for you. Unbalance is great in the low red zone. You can really catch them off balance because they got to be perfect. They got to have every gap accounted for. It's one way of taking back the advantage that the defense has on when you get closer to the end zone because, like I said, you're on a constricted, constricted field. It's reduced now. Now you're playing in the backyard. You're not playing in a pasture anymore. And that's an advantage to the defense. All right, now this is one we've done. Uh, we really got a lot of mileage out of this. Now what we did, we were unbalanced. We had, we took the wide receiver out, put another tight end in, another tackle in, and we ran this. The reason I like this, remember I'm a gap scheme kind of guy. A lot of times when you get down there close and they're filling up the gaps and all they're trying to do is penetrate so their backers can make plays, you can't pull. So it kind of screws up your gap scheme. So what I, we did, we would take it and still block down, gap down, backer it, and even severe angle it, and use these guys as our pullers, the double sniffers. So now look what you got. You got power or a buck-looking kind of thing where you, you block down, block down, block down. He digs. He wraps. It's good football play. And you can run it with the back coming here. You, you can have him set behind the quarterback. You can same side it, whatever you want to do. We liked him over here because we'd also we say we'd count. If you got a quarterback that's kind of savvy, we'd count. And if we felt like we had the numbers back over here, especially when we unbalanced that and had this joker over here, if we had the numbers back over here, we'd call counter. And we just come across the face with the running back, quarterback shuffle, shuffle, pull kick with that sniffer pull wrap with that sniffer and you got a football play but you got to count you play it by the numbers and then you of course you got just a good old-fashioned wedge you can do right off the tackle here we call that push where they literally pushed and we would take this guy move him here and he would kick the edge and he blocked down he blocked down he blocked down he blocked back blocked back blocked back and they would go in here and they would literally fit up on the linemen in front of them, fit up on their butts, shoot their hands like they were blocking a sled and drive their teammate. And that is great, especially down on the one yard line and short yardage, short yardage. And then you, like I said, you move him over here. We've got a video on that. It's a wildcat. It's our version of wildcat. We had all kind of cool things we did out of it. We would do it in the middle of the field. We did it for the whole second half one game because our quarterback got hurt. And it was a pretty tight ball game. And, you know, when you're at small school ball, that backup may be a ninth grader. And so we put two running backs back here, and we went into this thing and stayed in it for like a quarter and a half one night. We won the game. You know, we, we were struggling because the defense got pretty good at defending it when we stayed in it. All right, now this is a great formation here. Now, if you're a gun team, I'm not saying go under center, but I'm going to say this. If you, if you have any inkling you're going to go under center, like quarterback sneak when you're on the one-foot line, you need to be practicing under center snaps in pre-practice or post-practice every cockeyed day, every day. Like when your quarterback is throwing at the beginning of practice, have the center over there snapping to him. Quarterback still just doing his regular throwing, doing his pat and go. Have the center snapping to him from under center. Guys, you can lose a football game on the exchange if you're not repping it you don't have to rep it as a team you don't have to rep it as a team but that quarterback and center have got to practice that exchange uh, we were in the third round of the playoffs and went to it 
ended up fumbling the ball inside the one. I think we ended up winning by three touchdowns. That was the year we were so explosive. That was one of the years we were so explosive. That was 19. We lost a touchdown. I think our defense held up pretty strong. We got the ball in short field and scored anyway. But you've got to practice under center snaps. It's not something you just, you know, say, hey, go over there and take a few snaps. No, you got to do it every day. That's just my opinion now. You've got to do it every day. And and I was guilty of it before too. But when you're back, let's say you're backed up inside of your own one-yard line, you're going to snap the ball three yards deep into the end zone. Been there, done that. It's not a good thing. And if you're down inside the one-yard line, now you're snapping it back to the five-yard line. You're giving up four yards you've already earned. You know, and in my old age, I've kind of mellowed on that. I used to say, oh, you've got to be one of the other. No. But if you're going to do it, if you don't want to get under center ever, fine. But don't do it if you just pay a little lip service to under center. you got to practice under center snaps every day. It doesn't have to be team time. Just a few minutes before or after practice with the starting center and the starting quarterback. Or maybe you want to use the backup quarterback in this situation. Have him taking a lot of under center snaps. So now he can hand it off because maybe, maybe your quarterback's your best running back. And in this situation, you want to put him back here at running back. I don't know. But you better be practicing cockeyed under center. There's all kind of cool things you can do with this. You got play action pass. You can flood the zone over here because look, you got three right here. One, two, three. You can flood that zone on a and fake it to this kid right here and roll. Now your quarterback's got his uh, got the run pass option, not an RPO. He's got an option on the rollout to run it or pass it. So this is good stuff too if you are prepared to go under center. All right, before we go, real quick, somebody asked about call, uh, going calling it on two. When you're down there, because if you listen to the podcast last week with Coach Smith, he talked about it. He does that a lot on two-point conversions. He goes no play or goes on two, and he practices it. Now, if you've got any fear that your team's going to jump, don't ever go on two inside the five because the penalty is five for you and only half the distance for them. But if you're good at it, two-point conversions down close, let's say it's fourth and goal from the three. Well, you know, fourth and goal from one and a half is a lot better. So if you're confident, yes, call it on two or go no play if you got a timeout to burn in case they don't jump. But be very careful going for two, I mean, going on two when you're down close. Because remember, the, the defenses teach those kids, go on one. You know, what's what's the big deal? It's, it's only going to be a yard penalty. It's only going to be a one-inch penalty. If it's down, does that make sense? So the defense has got nothing to lose. You know, they're going on sound when they get down that close. A lot of defense coordinators, D-line coaches are going to tell you that. They won't tell you that, but they teach their kids that because they know that the the cost for them is is a yard, but the cost for the offense is five yards, which totally changes a scenario. You've got more to lose. But now, Coach Smith, if you listen to the podcast, more than once he alluded to two-point conversions, he would call it on two and make them jump, get that yard and a half. Now that's a whole different kettle of fish. All right, high red zone stuff, I didn't get much into that because to me, you're still in your offense. The only thing that would be adjusted would be your routes, your deep routes would have to adjust. Kids got to know, you know, when I – run out of field, let's say I'm running a post from the 20 and I get in the end zone, what do I do? You know, do I break it, bend it, bend it and go flat across the back? Stuff like that. You got to practice it, but you're still in your offense. In the old days, anytime I was high red zone, you can bet your sweet bippy I was going to run trap. Don't know why. It goes back to when I was a young man, a young kid, and watching teams like Nebraska would run the trap on and, – a lot of teams would run the trap in the high red zone. Talking about like 20, 25-yard line, we're going to trap you. Misdirection is awesome in the high red zone, but be in your offense. I would not even think about changing my offense, my groupings up, until I got to the 10 or, or closer in. Right, the, to me, the, uh, the high red zone, run your offense. All right, got an opportunity to support 
football talk with Coach Chip, buymeacoffee.com slash Coach Chip. Go there. They've got it set up on increments. If you want to, to give me a tip, so to speak, buy me a drink, guys. Go to buymeacoffee.com and slash Coach Chip. And there's our freebies. I'm not going to read them off to you. But be sure to like the video if you haven't already smashed that like button. And subscribe to the channel. Check and see. You may think you're subscribed because you watch it so much it keeps popping up on your YouTube. That doesn't mean you're subscribed. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't hurt you. You don't get spammed. It helps us. It helps me. All right. You know, this is all free. All you got to do is hit subscribe. If you want to help Coach Chip out, hit subscribe. And oh, by the way, if you've already liked this video and you've already subscribed to the channel, what else is there left for you to do? Share it. Share it on your socials. Share it with your coaching buddies. If they're not on social media, get the uh, copy the link and send them a text. And don't forget, contact me at seagull.chip at gmail.com. All right, guys, that's troubleshooting after week three. Red zone offense. Finish with a TD. Until next time, y'all, be elite.